um, because I know exactly who, because you have to remember, you all are like, yeah, Carolyn's had so many litters. She's had so many puppies. And if you take a look at Working Dog that I have pulled up over here, you will be able to see that. Oh, maybe you can't see. Okay, hold on. I can see. Okay. Okay, you can see clear as day that I have produced puppies on Working Dog and I have every single litter I have ever had on Working Dog, okay? Now, the reason I do that is because I want to be fully transparent and I want people to know what I'm breeding, how many I have, and I want it in a database. There is not one breeder that does this. It's just me. Like most 99 breeders are not uploading everything to Working Dog because obviously they don't want people to know how many they're breeding, what they're breeding, and how many puppies are born. They don't. A lot of people I've talked to are like, I'm not doing that, right? Or they don't want to pay for a working dog account or something like that. The reason, the reason people quote this number is because it's right here. It's information. You're not sharing anything new. And they quote around this public information like it's some horrible thing that I've been breeding almost four years and I've had 23 litters on, I don't think that's true actually, because Someone two did not take. Damn near made it through the alphabet. I don't remember where I saw that. It was on the discouragement file. If you okay, look at- so yeah. We haven't got there yet. And I can pause and wait till we get to the discouragement file. But let me go back to the Anyway, so the whole quote of I've seen thrown around, you promised me a refund and I didn't get it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the reality. My contract says all of my litters in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. All of my contracts say no refunds. All of them. Every single one. Every single person reads that contract. Every single person signs that contract. It says Wolf Wolf Kennels does not do any refunds or any other offers warranted herein. That is what my contract states. That my contract also states it only covers severe, um, it's like severe or crippling hip or elbow dysplasia, okay? So if your dog comes back with OFA mild or OFA moderate, technically it's not covered in the contract. And they signed the contract. They read the contract. They agreed to the terms in this contract. Whatever I offer out of the goodness of my heart is just me being nice. And what happened was, it's no secret that three out of my F litter came back with hip dysplasia, okay? There was one dog that also came back with elbow dysplasia. Hold on, let me double check facts. Because if, and here's the other thing that's quite comical. If you're in, I will show exhibit B. If you're in my Wood Wolf owners page, it's a Wood Wolf community page, you will actually see all my current statistics for any dog with that has been tested for hip and elbow dysplasia. All my current stats, every single litter and how many of what. I do not hide it. I make it public for all my puppy owners. I have no problem with this. And this is also something that you will not see other breeders do because I, again, want to be fully transparent with everybody on what my dogs are producing and how, when, where, who. Okay. So in this, it says there's 29 that have passed and then there are eight that have not passed OFA prelims. Okay. Okay. So two have elbow splish. So three. Okay. There you go. I got the statistic. So anyway, so obviously when people talk about the dogs that I've produced with dysplasia, they are talking about eight, eight dogs out of a uh, puppies, eight dogs. German OFA, shepherds. Right. German shepherds. So OFA states that one in four German shepherds will end up with dysplasia. And I have 29 who have passed and eight who have not. I am sorry that the eight have not passed. Every single home that has gotten a dysplastic dog that has developed dysplasia, I am sorry for that. I bred health tested entitled parents and I did everything I could. And all of those dogs have a pedigree of fully health tested entitled parents. Every single one of those dogs. So I did my due diligence as a breeder. Okay. I made sure every Everything was checked and I tried my best. And my F litter was my epic fail litter. So I imported Augie bred to a dog named Willie and I no longer have Augie and I do not have anything related to this litter in my program. Okay, let me first state that. Secondly, I imported the litter and three of them ended up with dysplasia. Now, they, I had a group chat for them. Okay, I used to do like litter group chats and let me tell you, never do those. Don't do those. Absolutely, do not even think it's a good idea. Don't do it. If you're a new breeder or you're an up and coming and you're like, I'm gonna have a group chat for every litter, don't do it. It's been nothing but drama and I stopped it after my F litter because I'm like, oh no. And what happened was they came at me in that group chat and I have all the 
screenshots as well for that. And they're berating me, you know, telling me all these awful things. And I produced, I sold them defective dogs and I'm trying to remedy the situation. So I'm like, well, what do y'all want? What do you want? Oh my God. Like it's like 10 o'clock at night. Samantha was with me. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm about to cry. I'm so sorry. What is going to make you guys stop harassing me? Leave me alone and let me like settle. Like, okay, what do you want? And they're like, we all want refunds by X amount of time and this and that. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I will see what I can do. And if that's possible, let me see the x-rays. Let me see your dogs. Like, let me see everything. Like, I have not seen anything. Nobody sent me anything. They were just telling me. And I'm like, I am so sorry. Like, let's just pause. And so in that heat of the moment, I did, I was like, I'll refund you. I'll do whatever you want. Like, just let me, let me think because it was like, boom, everybody going at me and I'm just cornered. I felt so cornered. And I was just trying to say anything that got them to like, stop for the moment and let me like leave my phone without coming back to 80 million messages being so hateful towards me for something I did not do. I did not sell them a puppy with dysplasia. They bought an eight week old puppy that developed dysplasia. That puppy got checked out. All of those puppies got checked out by the vet and all of them were fully healthy. No limping, no nothing. All of their vets will attest to that as well. And so there were three girls in that group chat that did that. Now, only two of those girls actually do have dysplastic dogs. Okay. I will say one was pretty severe and one was moderate. The third one, and you know who you are, honey, that dog had ship positioning and came back off a borderline because the hips were like this. And that dog would go SVA1 if it was positioned correctly. I have, I have no doubt in my mind. My vet looked at it. My other vet looked at it. My breeder friends looked at it. And every single one of us were like, no, that dog does not have dysplasia. And even Dr. Keller was like, retest in six months because the positioning was bad. Typically, when you see that, it's because the positioning is that bad. So those hips were fully in the socket. I have the x-rays. Like, they look good. Now, the other two dogs did not look good. And then another girl from that litter to make the third, I really love. I love her. She loves her dog. She's not on social media much. She makes up that third dog with dysplasia, and she has no problems with me. She wants another dog from me. She is not in the drama, and I absolutely love you. You know who you are. Um, But the other two girls are the ones ones that went after me pretty hardcore. Um, one of them was like, where's my refund? Where's my refund? Where's my refund? And I'm like, yo, bro, I need to talk to my lawyer about this. Like you signed a contract with me that says I don't do that. And you get a replacement puppy. We need to figure things out more. Like I cannot, as it sits right now, continue on this path. So she sends me an email and she thinks I post some story about her and sends me this and threatens me. And like, it was crazy. And I have all the emails for that as well. And I finally told her, I was was like, you can talk to me through email, but otherwise I'm blocking you on everything else. Like you're messaging me, harassing me. You're coming after me. And I don't appreciate that. And all while I see videos of her working her dog and the dog's at a boarding train jumping and running and absolutely not symptomatic, even though his hips were a train wreck. Like, I'll be honest, they were not good. But that dog was like acting like he had no issues. So yeah. I'm like, whoa, like what the heck is happening? And like, I do hope she hears this. And she does reach out and is like, hey, you know, I would love to work with you or something, you know, because I would have no problem sending her in a replacement puppy for that dog, like later on, once he's a little bit older or working with her. I don't have a problem with her. I had a problem with her harassing me and thinking everything I post was about her and going cocaine bear on me. I'm like, dude, I'm only one person. Like, I'm sorry your dog isn't perfect, but like, he looks perfect. Even though I know he wasn't because I saw the x rays. I'm very honest about that. The hips were not good. Now, to go on to the other dog from that litter who consistently shit talks me on social media. Thank you very much. And she, I see her in group shit talking me pretty much every chance she can get. And she sings the same song. I was promised a refund and never given a refund. And my dog has hip dysplasia and he did have moderate hip dysplasia. He had a subluxated hip. I won't deny that. She never sent me videos of the dog being lame, even though she claims that she was going to have to put down this dog because he was so lame. 
I have an email that says I'm probably going to have to put down this dog. I don't know if he's alive or not. So if anybody out there knows the dog I'm talking about and knows the person and knows if he's alive, I would love to know that because I have no clue. She's blocked me on everything. She doesn't answer my phone calls. She refused to talk to me on the phone. So yeah, I mean, I'm not giving any of them a refund. I'm telling you that right now. In the heat of the moment, I did agree to it and I would say anything to get them to stop harassing me and calling me names and doing what they were doing. Was it right of me to do that and tell them that? No, it was not. And it was not. They are the only people that I've told that to and not followed through with what I said. And I am sorry to them that I did give them false hope. However, the one dog was not at all dysplastic. So you're crazy for trying to get a refund. The other two dogs, okay, I could see why you were upset. But treating me the way you do, and this is something very important, very important for people to understand. If you are a member of the Wood Wolf community and you give me, let's just say 75%, right? You give me 75%, I will absolutely give you a, I will double what you put into me, I will double and put into you. If you are Team Wood Wolf, if you are about your dog, if you're trying to do everything right for your dog, you're trying to make it work, I will do board and trains, I will do lessons, I will do virtual, I will help you and I'll give you another puppy. Like I will do everything for you. If you are just a normal, decent, nice, and can have a conversation with me. But if you come to me trying to destroy my peace, destroy my family, destroy my life, demand this and that on a contract that you signed that I would not ever refund you for, and then you go around slandering me on all these social media pages because I didn't refund you when I said I would, even though our contract says I won't. At the end of the day, I will remain to my contract. And if you treat me like garbage, I will go to my contract and say, this is my contract. You signed it. I signed it. And that's all I have for you. If you come to me like a normal human, I will do everything I can and then some for you. And the people that have had problems with their dogs know that. The other people who, you know, other than Boone and Koki and the two or the three F litter girls. Other than them, let me double check, fact check that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. My K litter, yep, G, E, all of those owners were nothing but nice, nothing but understanding, did what's best for their dog. And I have nothing against that. And I've had no problems with them. But you have those five, five people that don't have perfect dogs that ruin it for everybody. And they yep. slander me, they defamate me. And here's the deal, guys. It is slander and it is defamation when it is a lie. Okay. Even if it's partly true, it's still a lie. And you have to understand people on the internet want you to believe their lies. So they'll wrap their lie in a half truth, make me out to be the villain that they want me to be portrayed as when I've done way more good than I have even ounce of bad. And again, I admit I shouldn't have told them I would refund them, but I didn't know what else to do to get them to stop. It was just, I'll do whatever you want. Just leave me alone. Let me talk. Let me think. Let me, let me go to sleep. And I shouldn't have done that. And I do regret that. But there was nothing I could do. The whole pedigree should have been perfect. The dog should have been perfect. And it ended up not being a good litter. I ended up selling the female and I don't own anything related. So the whole concept of people posting places, oh, she breeds dysplastic dogs. She produces all these dysplastic dogs. And I'm like, the eight, the eight. You're talking about eight. Go talk to any breeder that's had 20 litters. They would be lucky to only have eight. And then most of their puppy homes don't even x-ray. Like I paid for all of the x-rays of my C litter because I wanted to know that was like $7 a puppy. That was seven dogs. And I paid that out of my own pocket just to make sure Conan was producing good hips and elbows before I repeated the litter. And all of them came back with good hips and elbows. Um, but that's true. All of them. All of them. Like all seven. Puppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've actually x-rayed. Hold on. I can tell you. I have x-rayed. I had spent four x-raying and CT scanning aggro and I paid for Eisen's x-rays. So two out of my A litter. I paid for Rue. So one out of my DDR litter. I paid for all seven of my C litter. My D litter, all the homes did theirs. All five of them. And they all came back good normal. A, B, C, D, E litter. No, the three homes that did theirs paid for theirs. F litter, they paid for theirs. G litter, I did Gus and Jerry. H litter, I did all three of them. I litter. Oh, I did Isra. Yeah. Um, K litter, I have cat scheduled for Thursday. L litter, I did Lux. And O litter, I did Ozki. So I've x-rayed quite a few of my dogs that I've produced. Yeah. But I'm a backyard breeder and I'm a puppy mill and I don't know where my dogs are or how healthy they are or how many I've produced issues with. Not that I don't have a list publicly for all of my owners to see in this Wood Wolf community page. People it's crazy. People love to just make something up and run. Well, um, the fact is... 
What? Ahead. Oh, the fact yeah. is I did tell them I would refund them. Like that part is true. However, what's not told is the fact that they also harassed me and they also were very degrading towards me and they treated me very very poorly and then I went back and I'm like no I'm sticking to my contract homie my lawyer said no I say no you get a replacement puppy or nada and they didn't like that too much so well, it is what it is like they don't want their dysplastic dogs and they could take you up on your offer and get yep. a replacement puppy or yep. leave you alone Yep. And simple. I even I even offered to buy back their dogs. I even offered to buy their dog back. And they were like, no, we love our dog. <laughs> blew my mind. I mean, still offer stands. If any of them want me to buy their dog back for puppy price, I will buy their dog back right now and ship it to me. But none of them wanted that. They love their dog. They love who their dog is. And I mean, that at least speaks volume to the temperament that I'm producing. Even the dysplastic yeah. ones, I can't even buy back. Yeah, everyone's holding their dogs hostage from you. Well, except for Agro and Nitro. Well, I can buy them yeah. back, thankfully. But yeah, uh, at Ellen. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everyone that has a problem with you is going to be watching this podcast. Oh, I have no doubt they are. And they're going to be writing shit down, screen recording, sending. It's obnoxious. The amount of people that are genuinely genuinely obsessed i'm like do you not have anything better to do with your life than try to ruin mine like Clearly am i not. that interesting <laughs> jesus I think thanks taylor let's go to the mood of this podcast wrong. hi buddy <laughs> hi it's a man <gasps> are you looking at dad? say hello What's he look over here look, look. Everybody looks so can you turn the fire off hi uh, hi handsome that um, big old head of hair okay so let's get into some more general questions and then we'll see we'll see what you covered um, yeah yeah because i'm sure i covered a broad span okay um, so how's mia she's doing good she is great i have had a little bit of issues with her and conan with the baby coming home not too much just more of like conan's being really like protective of him and always wants to be where him and I are and he isn't a huge fan of like Mia rushing up under us or doing anything that might like knock him over or anything like that I mean he hasn't like attacked her or anything he's just kind of been watching like that's my baby and I'm like yeah. Conan it's not your baby chill fam um it's my baby I know it's my baby uh because he's just he loves Clark he absolutely loves Clark and he loves me so it's fair but she's been great um she'll be 11 this year so and she still acts like she's four years old like how are you how are you still crazy like runs around the yard with young dogs like doing zoomies and stuff every day i'm like girl you're wild but she's amazing she's and I'm, she's awesome truly a once in a lifetime type of dog and she is really what made me fall in love with long coats i mean i'd love duplo from afar but i had never like owned one until me and i was like oh my gosh so i need them all yeah <laughs> like give them all to me um what did you do to end up on alana's shit list who's alana uh, or is it she's Elena? von der matched and blah 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 oh. yeah so i can i can speak a little bit about that so some it was public somebody bought a puppy from her and the puppy had hair missing on the back of its legs and was like 11 oh my pounds gosh, I saw that. yeah yeah so it was like, like 11 black. yeah it was a german shepherd puppy and it was a 14 week old puppy that was like oh, a lot i remember yes. okay, yeah i'm sure you saw it and it was like 11 pounds and um like shit the excuses for why that puppy looked like shit blew my mind i'm like they're like oh yeah like we use this i don't know i don't know whatever they said was completely ridiculous that puppy was obviously not you know treated right and she sold Wait. that puppy for thirty five hundred dollars mind you and here's my problems she sold that puppy at 14 weeks old and the only vet record that she could provide for that puppy was a six week old vaccine and fecal mind you that puppy was 14 weeks old when it left her where is the nine week old shot where is the 12 week old shot where is the vet visit where is the nine and 12 week old vet visit why did this puppy not continue to get shots like it doesn't add up and it doesn't make sense why this puppy was not seen for a vet for two months like, yeah that's ridiculous like what is your excuse for that and there wasn't one so i commented on the girl's post because i was friends with her and i was like oh my gosh i'm so sorry that you got a puppy like this i hope that puppy gets help like i'm just so sorry you went through this if you need anything I'm here. I said something encouraging, something non-aggressive and just encouraging, right? Because nobody wants to get a puppy like that and then have to return it. 
you know, yeah. um, because she also had a hernia, like a rather large hernia that was not disclosed to her prior to buying this dog. Like, didn't she say she didn't notice it? Yes. Yes. Well, the thing is, the puppy never was taken to the vet at nine and 12 weeks old. So I'm sure the vet at six weeks old didn't notice it, you know? Yeah. It was very sus. And I mean, I don't know. So I had tagged Bronwyn's owner in the check. I tagged her on the post. I was like, hey, this is a Bronwyn puppy, like, just so you know. And then I saw pictures of Hank. I guess it was when he was with that Lex girl. I'm not 100 sure. Anyway, I saw pictures of Hank and I tagged Hank's owner because in the check, because I'm friends with both of them. I know both of them. I'm friends with them, Facebook with them. So I tagged him and I guess she saw that and then me liking other comments. So she makes this post about, oh, hold on. Before she makes this post, she messages me. I don't talk to this girl. Told her I want nothing to do with you. And I told her that through DMs. And I was like, I don't have anything for you. And I had blocked her a long time ago because I didn't want to be involved with anything that she was doing. And I still don't. Okay. Like, <laughs> don't put me in that category. So I don't know if it was like the fluffy Frenchies that did it for me or the Dalmatian that was seven months old that got pregnant. I don't know, but it was a point that I was like, I don't want to be around this. <laughs> So, so, I, so I had told her that prior. So she texts me and she goes, hey, can you FaceTime me? Hold on. I will read what I replied because it was pretty comical. And I had posted all the text messages on that girl's Facebook page, but she took it down for the meantime. It'll be back up though. But I said, so she goes, hey, FaceTime me. Oh, you can't even see this. It was like, hey, FaceTime me. And I said, that's an absolutely not for me. I've, I've lost a ton of respect for you over the last couple of years with time and time of your actions. I don't want any of your drama. I don't want to be sued by you. I don't follow you and we aren't friends. You can text whatever you want to say so I have record of it. And then she sends yeah. me this like long message. You see it? And I'll send you no. the screenshots. Do where yeah. it ends because you the little blue bubble oh yeah it was this long message and it was like basically like you're one to say shit like that your closet isn't clean or i don't know some some crazy shit and she was like i'm just trying to have an honest conversation with you and you're stirring the pot and i'm like what pot am i stirring you let a seven month old dalmatian get pregnant with your year old dog simba are you crazy like what and so she sent this long drawn out message and i replied back and i said Please leave me alone. I want absolutely nothing to do with you as you deserve zero of my time and energy. Goodbye. So that's how I got on her hate list. So then she has the balls to post my name on her post. If you don't want me to agree with what people say, don't do what people say. Yeah. Don't send a, a puppy home that looks like shit. Don't sell a $3,500 puppy that has hair missing on the back of its legs, has worms, is 11 pounds at 14 weeks old, and has no vet records other than a six-week-old shot. Don't do that. Don't do that. And don't expect me not to like things that get said that are facts. Like, it's one yeah. thing if, like, people are jumping on a bandwagon saying, oh, she's a fucking asshole, or, you know, I hate her, or, you know, bullshit. Tailored to bullshit. Okay, but I will tailor to something that when I see and I'm like, this is not okay. Can we not remember? Hold on. Okay. Can we not remember what I went through with Redux? This is not okay. This is not okay. And all of you people out there that think that's okay and you're listening to her lies, you need to talk to people that know her in her community. Don't listen to what I say. Do your own research. Because there are people in her community that have the same stuff and if not more to say. Like people that know yep. her. People that have sat at the court trials that she's been involved in. Like people yeah, that have- love that. Yes! People that have decoyed for her. Like this isn't just an opinion that I formed because I don't like somebody. This is an opinion I have that I don't want to be involved with that. And I'm probably going to get some cease and desist letter just for mentioning her on here like everybody else has gotten. Like she's so sue happy and NDA happy. Non-disclosure agreement for people that don't know what an NDA is. And I don't want to be involved in it. I have so much going on. I have a family. I am placing dogs. I am not hoarding dogs. 
dogs. I am giving dogs away because I want them to live the best life possible. And when I see that this person has 50 plus dogs, like when the term comes rotting in a kennel, that's what I think of. I don't think of my dogs who just use it for outdoor time so they don't have to be in a crate and then they get let out to all play and fuck around together. Like, I don't think of that. I don't think of my dogs. I think of fucking dogs that are literally like 80 different people are handling them just to clean shit and let them out for five minutes. Like, yeah. those are the kind of dogs I think of. Why are you not going after her? Why are you so many people, like we've already said, that are worth going after. Yeah. And yet, here we are doing this podcast. I, I finally know. got you. I know. And disclaimer to everybody who doesn't know, Taylor has asked me like 18 billion times to be on here. And I told her I wouldn't be on here until the first of next year. And then all this happened. And I was like, absolutely not. It's time. But thank you guys for getting Carolyn on my podcast. Because oh if pissed her off so much, she's like, I'm done with this bullshit. <laughs> Let's done. Do I'm done. And I'm at that point, guys, where like, if this, if this miraculously ruins me so so be it. So be it. Because people need to know the truth. People need to know that there's somebody out there with opinions and that there's some people out there with facts. Like, if you want to come to me with an issue, come to me as yourself with a freaking fact. And I'll be like, okay, this did happen. I own my shit. People are like, oh, she doesn't own her shit and she doesn't, you know, take accountability. What do you mean I don't take accountability? I'm over here like, yeah, that, do that dog's hips are shit. <laughs> I never have once blamed an owner, not once, when a yeah. lot of breeders will be like, well, they didn't raise them right, or they ran them on concrete, or they hiked them too much, or they did this, or they did that. I have never said that to an owner. I've said, well, I'm so sorry that that happened to you because I truly believe there is a genetic predisposition to any dog that develops dysplasia. I do. And I think the environment can bring out those genetics or not. But at the end of the day, my goal is to not have those predispositions to genetics be there. And I can only do as much as possible. So had to add that in. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's just watching me and like fucking around. I think he like wants to eat it because he's like, he's teething. Um, you the one or not? Because I'm going to take it away now and look, he's pissed. Uh oh. He said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. How old is he now? He's three months. He's like 14 weeks. Oh my God. He's um, so freaking cute. Um, how do you come up with your dog's names? They're so unique. Um, Honestly, I like Google random names that I hear and then I change the spelling to what I want. <laughs> um, that's the biggest way. So like Conan, like Conan O'Brien, but with a K. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much if you if you listen to my dog's names, most of them are normal names. I've just changed spelling. Cheyenne, Mika, ZV was a past dog, Conan, Eisen, Agro, Inaru. <laughs> um, yeah. That's pretty much how. I just changed spelling. I like my dogs to be unique. That's why we got Rebel instead yes. of everyone wants to call their dog Rebel. And yep. An our little puppy. There's not many options there. This this one is funny. Madison is a Yank and Crank trainer, so don't mind her. I guess we're talking about Riot. with Riot. I don't know her last name. Yeah, Madison um, Taylor. Right. I could um, comment on this because Madison came to my seminar in Alaska. She's not a Yank and Crank trainer. She's so not. I don't know who said that. They're Obviously, probably Carolyn just jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, She's not at all. She's a great she's trainer. So, there are so many like, like random. Okay. I don't even I know. know where to go. So, I know. Are you going to breed corgis again in the future? Absolutely. Just... Absolutely not. That is a big no. Put down the phone and hang up. Big red flag. No. So let me talk about that for a second because people okay. need to know this story too. I wanted to get into cardigan corgis because my best friend in the check, Lucy, breeds and shows cardigan welsh corgis and she said you should show an akc and i said well i would really need to evaluate the whole litter and pick which one would be best suited for akc and so she goes well why don't i just send you two litters and you can co-breed with me and you can pick puppies that would best fit akc standard and i'm like oh my gosh that's like amazing holy cow that's so nice of you who would not do that who yeah. would not do that that's an it's like we'll split the litter pay for half the shipping and i'll breed to my show male who's like a champion and all this stuff and both the girls are show rated and they're standard colors everybody's standard colors and here you go right we'll see in europe they don't have a problem breeding brindle to merle you can do it and you can still register the puppies well apparently in america that's like a don't ever do that and i did not know that so i imported these two litters here and they turned out pretty good 
but they produced liver and they produced <laughs> liver merle and they produced <laughs> Pretty. They're so pretty. They are so beautiful. And let me tell you, the people who have the dogs out of those litters love these dogs, especially the Rosalie litter. That was a great litter. But anyway, so I was like, yeah, that's so great. Like, sounds good. Well, the second I do that, it was like the floodgates opened of all the Cardigan Corgi newbies. Because see, I had been talking with two Cardigan breeders and I told them what I was doing and they've been breeding for like 30 years. And they were like, yeah, that's no problem. I used to have some of these lines. Lines. These are good lines. Like they didn't tell me not to do it. So it was like the floodgates opened for all the Cardigan Welsh Corgi newbies to just railroad me. I mean, it was like, bam, bam, bam. Like one of those like fights where you see somebody just getting beat up and beat up and beat and they try to stand and then they get kicked in the ribs. And I'm like, I can't breathe. It was that. It was that. 10 times over, it was that. And I thought the Bocheron community was pretty crazy. The Cardigan Welsh Corgi community of the newbies is pretty crazy as well. And the problem is you have the backyard breeder Cardigan Corgi breeders, right? Like the ones that breed for the off color. And like everybody leaves them alone. And then they came after me. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're okay with these people doing it, but you're not okay if I import two litters to the owner that shows and titles Corgis so that I can pick back the best ones to show in AKC, right? Like that was the dream. Dream because my best friend breeds golden retriever or uh, shows her golden retrievers. So I was like, oh my gosh, we could go to dog shows together. And I even, oh my gosh, I even bought a show lead for my future Cardigan Welsh Corgi puppy at a dog show in Orlando. Like I was like telling everybody, met the Corgi people. Like I was all in. And then I was like, nope, all. I get enough crazy people in the German Shepherd community. I don't foresee myself anytime soon going back into the Cardigan community. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay. I don't need that. Like, especially when there's so many other breeds out there. You know, if I ever decided I have a Pomeranian breeder that I ran into at a dog show and I freaking love if she listens to this, you are amazing. Your dogs are amazing. And you kicked my ass in obedience. So props to you, girl. I'm a fan and she is amazing. And if you want the breeder, send me a message because she breeds Pomeranians, the AKC champion, grand champion, UKC champion, UKC grand emerald champion, and do rally in AKC obedience. Like they're like, this. her Pomeranian was focus healing, like prancing. I have a video of me doing it with the dog and I couldn't like stop petting the dog. I was like, this is everything. If I ever got a little dog, this is what I want to a T. So I was super excited to be able to meet her and just fangirl. And um, that made it much better on my face. Um, I'm like minimizing these things. But yeah, so I ran into her and she's super supportive. She's all about, you know, me being a part of the Palm community one day and helping me and showing me and she lives in Georgia and like, she's amazing. Like I've been following her and she's pretty awesome. So I don't think cardigans are in my future. It just was really toxic and I get enough of that. I don't need more. Any personal favorite police canine trainers or kennels, either small or large scale? So I will say that I feel like, I feel like the majority of working line German Shepherd breeders have produced a dog that has gone into the police departments. There isn't one I would say if you're looking for a police canine go to, but I will say Omwolf German Shepherds has produced several Leos. And Is that two how you Omwolf? I thought it was Amwolf. Amwolf, yeah. I mean, I think where you're, you're from. Probably know better than me. I mean, you have no, to No, no, no. It could be Amwolf. I just say Omwolf because I'm Southern, but I'm sure up there when I've been up there, they're like Amwolf and I'm like Amwolf. You know, I think it's apple and orange or apple, 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 apple. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> well, yeah. I'm Wolf, am whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah whatever I, it is. Yeah. I did want to, since we brought them up though, I did want to go into that because there's a negative. So if you go into the discouragement file, pull up the let's, Omwolf one. Yeah, let's go, go, let's go ahead and go into that because I'm going to pop the fuck off. Oh, y'all ain't right, ready stop, for this. Stop being a glorified puppy mill. Stop scamming your puppy owners. Okay, oh, I'll, I'll stay on top of it. Crazy, um, crazy people. I Okay, so this is a two-part, hold on, Jersey's about to be really loud coming That's out fine. of this crate. He always slams into my wall. It's fine. Sounds like Mika. Did you hear that? Okay, so this is a two-part. Part one, you've been breeding for four years and have already gone straight through the alphabet. Oh, here it is. 
Um, you've already gone straight through the alphabet. You have no consistent structure. Oh, wow. Where did that come from? I know. What? Okay. You have no consistent structure. Quite a lot of dog with failing health scores. Poor temperaments. I've never heard that one. Anyone no. who wants to see dogs have poor temperaments, you're fucking high. Okay, let's keep going. And off standard structures. So they're poor. They're not consistent. And now they're off standard. That's interesting. But right. yet you call yourself an ethical breeder. Okay. And then this is the same person. Supporting other well-known puppy mills. Oh, now Francesca's a puppy mill. Like Vom Amwolf or Amwolf and their breeding practices. No wonder why you think it's completely fine breeding, failing health results. Bet you got that from Francesca Miller anyway. None of the dogs within your kennel is breeding worthy as you have done nothing. <laughs> Where? Like literally whips. Yeah. Tell them. Tell them right. to fuck off. Okay, so let's get into Francesca's yeah. cat. This is great. So I've actually... Um, like, this is, hold on. This is actually so funny. I wish we started here, but okay. Let's... I know. The discouragement ones are hilarious. And there's like 15 of them. And they're so comical. Or 14. So, um, well, so let's go on the topic there. Because I do have a dog from Francesca Miller and Gina Miller. And I do want to start off and say I absolutely love them. Okay. And there was a time that we absolutely hated each other. I was a royal pain in the ass about seven years ago when I first got into the dog sport world. I was a newbie who thought I knew things and was sad and lonely and got cheated on by my boyfriend. who's now my husband. Um, and oh. I... <laughs> Today... Yeah, that's, that's a known thing. And we just were going separate ways. So I was a very unhappy person in that like 10 month span. And because um, we broke up for about 10 months. And I was very hateful, very angry. And I did a lot of damage to a lot of people early on. And I was all about the drama. And I was a different person than I am now. And I didn't I didn't live the same way I live. And so back then I was very mean to Francesca and I've apologized probably like a billion times to her. And we just did not get along for a long time. And that was partially due to a common denominator friend that I had at the time that I'm no longer friends with, um, that I started in dog world, in the dog world with, but they didn't get along, ended up, and then we didn't get along. So anyway, so a few years ago, I don't know how it happened, but Francesca and I, I guess, rekindled things and got in touch with each other. And I started following the freak and Philu or Philu, however they say it, and Batani. And I'm like, whoa, like these dogs are freaking awesome. She's out there doing this shit. Like, wow. Like, wow. And I said, sorry. Like, I apologized. I was like, yo, I was a fucking dick. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm not that way anymore. I have respect for you. I want to go on a new leaf and ever since then we've been kosher and i um saw that tox was first there was a puppy available out of her in litter and i had been looking for a long coat black male that was a high caliber i wanted something with some heat and i had watched her raise filu and watched her raise fitani and i was like this is what i want give it to me so i reached out to her and i was like i want this puppy and they were like two weeks old and she was like what like are you sure and i was like i want this puppy i don't want any videos of this puppy i don't care about that i don't want any pictures i don't really care i don't care i will come at eight weeks old pay you in full and get this dog right because i knew the pedigree i had done the research i knew the parent like i knew what i was going to get into and i was ready to put 120 percent into it and so i trusted everything she told me and she told me you're going to really enjoy this dog and i was like great so i went up there and i fell in love with Gina and Frankie. Like they are some of the nicest people and they don't take sh They own their shit. They're honest about their shit. They have no problems breeding what they want and selling to who they want. And I respect the fuck out of that. And they've been doing it a long time. The mother Gina used to breed St. Bernard's. They're not some novice Ricky newbie people out there breeding untitled dogs without proof to back up the dogs like I didn't give a shit that Philu didn't have his titles when I bought Tox I didn't give a fucking shit because I knew the caliber of that dog and people we need to realize titles do not translate to your puppy just because a dog has a BH or just because they have an IGP they could have a BH and then go get their IGP the puppies they produce are not going to be different they're yep. not going to be different, regardless of the titles your dog has. You could have a national level IGP dog that goes after their handler and tries to kill people, or that dog could have a BH. And guess what? They're still going to produce handler aggression. Like, end of the story. And titles are a way to showcase the dog's potential through good training. Yep. And I knew that. 
watching Filu get raised, I knew that dog has everything in him to be on a national level. And I knew the pedigree and I was ready to handle something out of Hercules, something out of Chris. I wanted the fire. And fuck, man, did I get the fire that dog is hot and he has taught me so much as a handler has he been the easiest dog to raise absolutely not would he might have gotten returned if he was sent into a pet home absolutely like <laughs> like i mean he has a bark collar on that's the only reason that dog isn't i'm talking right now and he's not losing his cool like he is an highly frustrated, highly intense, highly possessive, highly dominant, highly motivated dog that I take to any training field and people turn their head to stare because he comes out ready every single time. And he's so fucking sweet, man. Like he loves people. Everybody that meets him falls in love with him. And I'm like, yeah, but if you took him home, you'd return him to me. <laughs> Um, just to be, yeah. And he will die with me. Like I have mended, he has taught me so much. I could, I have gone into detail with a lot of people about how much he's grown me as a trainer because he's a type of dog I've never fully had and owned. And I cannot thank Francesca enough for taking that chance with me because she could have easily said, no, Carolyn has too many dogs or no, Carolyn's a backyard breeder or no, Carolyn used to hate me. You know, she could have believed this. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Backyard breeder on a two and a half year old dog with oh fey good hips and elbows that i have not bred because he's crazy um i have not bred yet so but i'm so thankful that she looked at me and was like if you can handle mika because i worked mika at their club you know if you can handle mika you can handle talks and i'll never be able to thank them enough for giving me that chance and for giving me for being such a shitty human being seven years ago because i would not have one of the nicest dogs i've, I've ever had and raised i mean he's just so easy in sport he, he's difficult at home and he was difficult to raise but he was the easiest dog i've ever had in sport never had to work grips never had to work like any real barking issue pulling it like he's never done a lot of the things that people go to a club and they have to work on right and so i've been really thankful for that but to the people that have garbage and shit to say about frankie and gina and their program go fucking talk to them have some balls say it to them and let them state their side because i've seen freak and he's amazing like i get that he has grade one elbows and he would have probably passed sv honestly but she decided to leave it at grade one and breed him regardless and that's her choice she saw the yeah. dog for who he is and she breeds him accordingly and if you don't yeah. have a if you have a problem with it don't buy a puppy from her she's health it's testing really and titling beautiful. her dogs yeah like if you don't like her don't buy a puppy from her it's not like she's out here selling dogs on craigslist and raising fucking puppies and wire fucking nasty shit like she's not i've seen her set up i've been to her home she is awesome they do it right they do it well and they do it to a high caliber so anybody that has a fucking thing to say about them go fucking talk to them and stop with this garbage cyber bullying shit holier than thou entitled garbage i'm over it i'm so Tom's over it Tom's laughing at you in the background it's oh. over it i'm over that man like people need to stop man there needs to be people that stop these people there needs to be more people That's out there yeah like um, I don't know her name. Whoever was posting the shit that people were talking about you on her page. Oh, uh, Fugarten. Fugarten uh, is you say it. Oh, I don't know. I, is that not how you say it? I feel like the things that, like, the way I thought that half of these things were pronounced, I'm, like, way off base. Wait, how I, do like, you say it? Am I saying it wrong? No, I'm probably saying it wrong. How do you I say it? Was, it? I thought it was Square Garden. Oh, I don't I know. I'm, I know. Maybe it's me. I have no clue. Holy shit. I trust your judgment or pronunciation. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, let me go in to talk about that as well. Because that's, you don't even really know this part. So, the crazy thing about it is, Madison and I don't really have beef with each other. And I know that sounds weird. Because you see her stories. And you're like, ah, she must fucking hate Carolyn. Right? And you would see us maybe online and maybe think that. But in reality, Madison and I aren't that different. And I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds weird. But we both come from having to work our ass off for things. We both come from having dogs that weren't 100% suited for sport that we stuck through. We both come from having to endure a lot of shit. We both come from a place of trying to do what's best for our program. Now, do I agree with her posting all of that shit show on her story and enabling it? I don't agree with that. But... 
do her and I have a fucking animosity beef? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Like, I feel like Madison and I are on this level of, okay, you're in your corner. I'm in my corner. I respect you. I have respect for you. Do I agree with everything Madison and Alexis do? No. Do they agree with everything that I do? No. But it's one of those, we're both breeders. We're both trying to do best for our program. So I'm not going to go out of my way and shit talk these people who are trying. Because they're trying. They're not sending out sick puppies. Like they're not, you know, selling these dogs that are horrific. Like they're not, they're not doing that. So I just, I don't have a heart to like come on here and like talk shit because there's no proof of that. I mean, have they had some altercations with some puppy buyers? Yeah. But so have I. So have I. I have a rap sheet. So I'm just not, I don't, I don't have any desire to have beef with Madison. I do respect her. She's out there trying. She's out there titling. She's out there training. And, you know, I I don't know what more I could ask for. Yeah. I just don't think that, you know, I think we're already, well, I say we, I haven't had a litter yet, but obviously that that was my goal. Um, You know, I think as shepherd breeders, we're already so, I don't know, attacked. Like everyone's always coming after shepherd breeders. And obviously I haven't had a litter yet, so I can't wait to see what happens then. I don't really care. Shit gets crazy. Yeah. But, you know, I think we should all be on the same side. We're all on the same team. We all, you know, the good ones at least, you know, we're all better breed. We're trying to do right by the breed, by our personal dog. So I just don't agree with anyone giving people talking shit a platform like that. You've suppressed your voice to avoid, you know, going to the drama, buying into the drama, like trying to, you know, be peaceful and try to avoid these things. But I do think at a certain point, like, you know, obviously this happened for you now. Like you can't just continue to let people spit around things that aren't true. Like, Absolutely and just, not. you know, talk shit on your name, what you've worked so hard for, yeah. you know, all these years to build. And you know, people are just social media warriors, keyboard warriors that are useless human beings in real life and Absolutely. have literally done purpose. Do you have any relation to or thoughts on the pen vet working dog? I don't know enough to comment. Okay. I wish I did, Same. but I don't know enough to fully comment on them or anything about it the only thing that i know because i know oh same i know that a dog from savvy's breeder was donated i know some yes, i know some breeders that. Hate dogs to that mm-hmm. place and they just do different types of work that's all i know any experience or thoughts on less common on less common or up and coming types of detection canines such as conservation detection bed bug bed bug detection dogs etc which um, i assume is probably person that asked about the pen vet working dog center because the dog that was donated is a um was the first ever what are those bugs bed um, bug detection dogs no it was the uh, oh COVID was like dogs a, no what? like the red bugs hold on invasive triggers no. oh the spotter lantern fly so kim donated a dog that was the first ever spotted lantern fly detection dog it's That's like it, cool. it's invasive up here i don't know if you guys have the lantern flies down there but I maybe you don't have them because of the detection <laughs> the detection yeah um, i don't think we do but i could be wrong I'm not 100 sure on that okay let's see what made you want to do this not gonna lie which you've already kind of answered we've already that. covered that the signs of hip dysplasia honestly nothing i don't think there is anything i think people like to speculate that a dog waddles when it walks or sways or anything like that but i'll tell you i've seen more dogs walk normal with a mild or moderate hip than i have seen any dog walk funky that has a bad hip Every dog that I've looked at, and I'm like, oh, that dog definitely has dysplasia. Comes back like, oh, if they good. Yeah. Like, there's no way you pass. And then it passes. So I don't think I there is like any way. I just swear that they like walk funny and like walk weird. Right. So as someone that has a dog with severe hip dysplasia, I will say with Simba, the reason why I went in to get him x-rayed was because he was just really slowing down on like yeah. fetch. And at the time, I think he was two or three when I took him in. So he was yeah. still young and he was slowing down and he was just choosing to like go lay down even if we just started a hike. So I was like, hmm, that's weird. Yeah. I took him to get x-rayed not actually thinking it would come back like that just because I'm just over dramatic sometimes. And then like, they weren't even attached to the sockets. And I was like, oh, you know, so that's oh. a whole other thing. <laughs> oh. Um, curious as to what you have to say about the soggy, soggy. ex Debbie, oh, yeah. the puppy that survived are thriving, but what are your thoughts about Debbie's owner? So, so I love Debbie. Let me start <laughs> off by that. I think Debbie is a fantastic dog. She's a ZVV import, SG rated, excellent hip elbow. Like she was great. The only caveat with her was a DM carrier, but that was whatever. Cause Soggy was clear. Also, somebody asked how I pronounce Soggy's name. It's Soggy, but in the check it was Soggy. So Sagi? when he's, yeah. So when he's being naughty. I go saggy and then when he's being good I go saggy 
come here, little Sook Sook. So depending on how he's acting is depending on how I say his name. But anyway, so I really, really liked Debbie. I wanted to actually buy Debbie. However, Debbie was bred to cadet. And I don't know if you remember all of that tea. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. So Cadet was a Red Bull son. And I did not like Red Bull because he ended up dying of liver cancer at six, which was kind of a red flag for me. And I was like, I don't think I personally want anything out of Red Bull. Now, to the people who have Red Bull kids and Red Bull semen, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. I don't care what you do with it. And I don't care. I personally just did not want to litter with Cadet because he was a Red Bull son. And there's not a lot of studies done on cancer in dogs, so wasn't worth the risk. Well, it ended up Cadet was also a DM carrier, and the owner had lied to the person that bought Debbie pregnant. So several of those puppies ended up with DM affected ratings. And I understand where Denise is coming from, where she was like, well, I was lied to by the owner and like all this stuff, right? Like, I'm not going to deny, like she was definitely blindsided and there should have been due diligence and making sure that there was an actual physical clear report. But, that was, that was a big on it. Yeah. But, but I really, really liked Debbie and I really liked her pedigree and I thought she would pair very, very well to Sagi. I told Denise if she ever sold Debbie, I was interested in buying her. Right. And she was like, that's cool. Like, sounds good. I want to breed Soggy. And I'm like, sounds good. Like, I have no problem with that because Debbie's a very nice dog. So she brought her down. And as I assumed, Debbie was a super nice dog. Very sweet, very easy to breed. We got like two or three live cover. No, two. She stayed overnight. So they brought her. I kept her live covered her at night and then live covered her in the morning and they picked her up. And so she ended up having the litter of puppies. And I guess she didn't take care of them how they should have been taken care of and she ended up selling some sick puppies and some puppies with some issues like health wise like the one the puppy Alana got with coccidia and worms and she didn't know the dog had that but then Alana took two weeks for her to take the dog to the vet and then it died it was a very weird situation and at the time I was still good with Alana and I'm like hey if you want another puppy I know you didn't buy this from me but I'd be happy to like give you another soggy puppy I'm so sorry like I was trying to do everything I could, even though it wasn't my litter. Again, trying to be nice to people. It wasn't my... Yeah, it's better I ended up not going to fruition. But I was there for her during that. And then there was two other puppies sold that I am friends with on Instagram. And I've kind of like adopted them because Denise has gone like mega M- MIA and they can't get a hold of her. I can't get a hold of her. She was asking me if I wanted Debbie and she wanted to sell her to me. And she told me she was 10 dollars. And I was like, I'm going to try. And then I ended up, I couldn't afford her. And so I told her I couldn't afford her. I really wish I could. So I don't know. And I haven't heard from Denise since then. I've tried to reach out to her, but I never got a reply. So if anybody knows where Debbie is, I would love to know that. But I think that pairing was very nice. The people who have the puppies from him, from the, the two people I talked to, the dogs seem really good. Really, really nice. I just wish the breeder would have done her due diligence. And I don't know where the other three are so there were six one died which was kuba alana's puppy and then the two i know of and then i think there were three more and i have no clue where they went i tried to ask denise but again i got ghosted so yeah that's kind of all the tea i have on that unfortunately well we could answer this one where garden where garden has people they think that they're close with that they'll invite to stay at their house spill all of the behind the scene details and i would advise everyone to choose a different breeder that's some tea i thought you and where garden were friendly what's going on um like i said um i don't really have anything to speak on about them um Everybody can do their research on their own breeders. Do I think it was the best route to post all of those Anon things? I don't. But at the same time, I don't have any beef with Madison. Um, I do respect her as a fellow trainer, competitor, breeder. Um, Again, I don't, I think her and I agree to disagree on things, but we also agree on a lot of things. So that's kind of all the tea there, unfortunately, for everybody. Sorry. So. Finally, for the truth about you. You ready? <laughs> this one is so backyard, funny. You're a backyard breeder constantly pumping out the... You're a backyard breeder constantly pumping out puppies gone through the alphabet quicker than I drink water. They use the wrong form of then. They use then and it should be then. Then I drink water. Yet you think you're some queen of being the only long coat breeder in the States. Like, grow up. You're a bully and frankly, they should have used a comma, 
frankly, learn some grammar, bitch. Um, frankly, I'm glad all this is. So if you didn't know that, that's about you. Stop scamming your puppy owners. Why? Oh, we'll go back to this one. Also, the people who talk mad shit about you turn around, cry. This makes no sense in a I sentence. Know. Also, the people who talk mad shit about you, comma, turn around, cry when people talk shit about them. Cough, cough, Square Garden, cough, cough. Not to mention there are a couple of the biggest mean girls in the GSC community. I'm not going to comment on that because it's just not really no comment yeah okay so not announcing your most recent breedings having uh, other breeders advertise them let me talk about Good that dog. yeah let me go let me go let me talk about this one because there is there's truth to the lie well there's truth to the hate so like i had stated prior i needed a break after ducks happened but the pro not problem but the conundrum i was in is i have these great dogs and i have these people wanting these puppies but I have a newborn. I have an infant. I do not have time to devote right this moment to whelping and raising a litter the way it should be done. So I talked to Shannon at Vom Clark German Shepherds and I was like, hey, how about we? I breed to Darth, your male. They're male. And you whelp the litter and we'll split the litter. She had no problem with that. I've been to her home. I've seen how she whelps. She follows all my protocols. She raises really good puppies. And so I felt confident with doing that. And with doing that, it was half her litter too. So her putting it on her good dog was no different because it was her male. They were at her house. So I didn't feel anything against that. I mean, technically half the litter was hers anyway. And I absolutely fucking love Shannon. So, I mean, she is one of my best friends. And so that was that litter. And she whelped and raised that litter. And then I had my shortly after that. So that was T, U, and V. So I'm at V. So T, U, and V. And again, they're all on working dog. So anybody that wants to see anything I've been doing, they can just go to my working dog breeding page and see what litters have been born. It's public information. So my S litter was Darth and Kiri. And then my T litter was Agro and Shy. My U litter was Conan Dara. And then my new recent litter is Agro and me bomb hostile which is Roxy. I'm the only one that's advertised any of those litters because um T U and V all were raised by Emily Lewis in Alabama and I tell every single puppy owner they know that they have no problem with that Emily actually has a group page on Facebook that I add all the potential homes to and they can see how they're raised they see their outdoor times they see their home I mean Emily posts more transparent shit about her house and her home and her puppies than I could ever think about doing she works from amazon at home so she's home 24 7 she has a son that's homeschooled so he also is around the puppies all the time they have other dogs that help raise and socialize the puppies she has a fenced in backyard fenced in front yard fenced in several other yards her home is always spotless i don't know how with all the dogs i'm like emily how is there no hair anywhere i mean she is an amazing person she's been breeding longer than i have and i have no I have no problem talking about our agreement. Our agreement is $500 a day of whelp and five per puppy that she raises. I pay for all vet care. She pays for food. And she raises the puppies exactly how I would. And so far, they have turned out absolutely incredible. So to the people out there that are like, there's another question that you're going to run across that goes, why are you even breeding if you're not doing it yourself? I'm pretty sure I know who sent that. It's kind of a nastier question. But the answer to that is because I have extremely nice dogs that can produce great dogs for great homes. That has been my purpose. That has been my purpose since I started. Regardless if they're in my house or not, they are my dogs. I am doing these breedings. I am pairing these dogs. I am doing the research. I am making sure they're health tested. I am making sure they're titled. Like that is all of me. And so when I have somebody that I trust to whelp and raise this litter who has done it now three times with extreme success, I have no problem doing that. And the people that have bought these puppies absolutely have nothing but good things to say. So, I mean, my goal is good dogs and great homes. It doesn't matter if it's directly from me or not. The goal is still there and I'm still achieving that, even though I now have trusted friends to help me. Because to me, you should not be breeding and, and whelping any dog, any litter of anything if you cannot devote your time to do What made you buy so many titled dogs and breed so many litters? When you first started, I had high hopes for you and your goals, but importing so many dogs to live in kennels and pump out litters was hard to see. Right. So let's go into that because that's a, that's a great, not good thing, but here I am to explain it. 
right? So my dream has always been, like I said, to produce great dogs, for great homes. I imported some of the first litters here of a long to long coat, which was Giddy and Flash. And before me, it was really taboo and nobody was doing it. So I was being a big advocate for the long coated German Shepherds in America because there aren't there weren't many out of health tested and titled and pedigreed dogs, especially pure West German working lines, which were my A and D litters, which were agro and nitros litters. Now, with that being said, it made a lot more sense to me. Wait, hold on. Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. It made a lot more sense to me to buy what I wanted for my program at the time while I'm working my other dogs to then start my visions and keep dogs back and breed my own dogs back. Like I knew exactly what I wanted and I got that out of my A and D litters and I have no regrets. I got Dara. I imported Dara. She has produced three litters for me that have been immaculate. And to tell somebody that, oh, you're breeding too many litters. Oh, you buy health tested and titled dogs. And I look at them and I go, so are you trying to tell me all of my litters that have have puppy and have homes that love them more than anything. All of my dogs that have saved lives, all of my dogs that have changed lives, all of these dogs I've produced out here that have homes who love them more than anything. So you're telling me that they didn't deserve to have their dog? You're telling me they shouldn't have your dog because I shouldn't have imported a dog titled and health tested. They shouldn't have their dog. That is what you're telling me every time you say that. And the other thing that always comes up is, well, you didn't title the dog, right? So one side of people go, well, you didn't title the dog, so you shouldn't breed the dog. And then the other side of people are like, well, it's fine that you titled the dog or it's fine that the dog is titled. However, you breed too much. It's just always something. It's always something and nobody can ever agree on like one direction, right? So like there's these huge people, like the huge group of people that go, well, you didn't title that dog. It doesn't deserve to be bred because you didn't do it. Okay. Hello, honey. How about you go to AKC confirmation when you pay a handler to have your dog for seven in months to champion that dog for you. Hey, guess what? They bred that dog and they did not title it. Yep. That doesn't mean the dog doesn't have excellent confirmation. That doesn't mean the dog is not going to produce puppies that could potentially be show puppies because the handler didn't do it. Are you kidding me? Like, it's such a double standard in the German Shepherds because people think if you did not raise that dog and title it to its fullest potential, then that dog is not worthy of being bred. And I go, tell my owners that. Tell my owners that Chloe, who has a B, shouldn't be bred. Go tell my owners that. And they, I mean, go tell my owner that had a horrible dog experience prior to getting his Chloe puppy and then got this dog and it's everything that he wanted and more and he is beyond grateful. Like, tell him that he shouldn't have gotten this puppy. And this double standard of, well, you can't, important title a dog well at least they're health tested and titled like why don't you go after somebody that's breeding some dog with no health testing and no titles literally search german shepherd puppy right now in facebook and you're gonna pull up 18 billion of them go to good dog right now and type in german shepherd and you're gonna see 18 billion of them at good dog i don't like you and i left you so i do not support good dog in any way shape or form i have left their program because of their puppy mill backyard breeder and garbage mentality so um, at good dog hate plug, um, not catch me on good dog anymore. But anyway, so I don't agree with this whole double standard of if somebody doesn't raise a dog, if somebody doesn't title a dog that they don't know how to breed that dog because I'm a dog trainer. Like I'm not just some random person on the internet that bought a nice dog and breeds them on my 70 acres and then self proclaims themselves as a dog trainer, even though they have no legitimate training and they own their own business because they could never work for anybody else. Um, um, I, are you right? What? I said, you, are you ill? Yeah, that <laughs> statement was pretty ill. Um, but <laughs> but I do work for a dog training company for six and a half years now. I have trained hundreds of dogs with hundreds of different issues. I've done boarding trains, private lessons, you name it, I've done it. And so when I look at a dog to be bred, and this was another question on there somewhere, it was like, what do you look at when you look at a dog being bred, right? Like, what are you looking for? And I will tell you right now, temperament is my number one priority. Health is second. I need to make sure the dog is healthy. If they're not, temperament isn't what I want. I don't even look at their health. I don't even look at their pedigree. I don't care because if that dog is trying to bite me, if that dog is coming up the leash, if that dog is trying to kill kids, 
or other dogs even, you know, like just for no reason. Like those are things like if they can't be trained, there's a problem, you know, like there's a problem if somebody's dog is going after their owner for nothing. Like I don't want dogs like that. And I don't breed for that. Now, if other people do, that's their program. That's what they want. But for me, temperament is always going to be top priority and then health. And then pedigree is an added third. And I go, okay, what could this dog potentially produce given what this pedigree says? You're such a big inspiration to other young backyard breeders that have low standards and kennel blindness. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. you. Two males return. Oh yeah. Um, which Let me talk return, they were called back, but, and immediately you use them within your program as studs. Like what breeder does that? Okay. Right. That's let me talk point. back. Right. So let what? me talk about that. I bought aggro back at eight months old, everybody. He was not bred until he was three years old. Okay. So, or two and a half, two and a half, three. He was not bred until he was over two. Okay. So I got him back at eight months old, eight, nine months old. All right. So one, I bought him back. And then two, Nitro, I bought back for $7,000. And I bought him back to breed him. He was titled, health tested, and he's ready for a one. I know who that dog is. I know his mom. I know his pedigree. I know his litter. And obviously, when I buy a dog to breed, I'm going to breed the dog when I get the dog. He is a fully health tested, over two-year-old, titled male. That is why I bought him back. They weren't returned. They were literally bought back. So, and those are the only two males that have, I've bred that out of my program. So Checkmate. I feel like a lot of these things are common sense, but people clearly are, they are. are lacking in that. Um, okay. So are you still friends with Sydney Shockey and what happened with the whole Shockey house situation? Oh, there's like five questions about this. They're like four or five. It's They're like... like Point. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the main one of this. So oh, this is a really sticky situation. Um, I will always love Sydney as a person. I do think mental illness is very rampant in the dog world. And I think people can get overwhelmed and I think emotions can run high and feelings can get hurt and things can happen. Do I support Shaki Haas? The answer is going to be no. Will I always be here for Sydney? Will I always be a safe place for her? And will I always be there for her? I have to say yes, because I do love her. Yes, she's done wrong. Yes, I'm not denying that. There have been accusations that are pretty telling. But when things happen like that to somebody that you're that close with, I think it's really two-faced to try to jump ship on somebody who's never personally done you wrong. And Sydney has never done me wrong. Sydney has always supported me. Sydney has always been there for me. And when I needed a phone call and I needed an event, Sydney was there. And the human side of me still loves her, just like the human side of me still loves Juliana. I mean, do I agree with all of their choices? No. Is it my fault or do I have anything to do with any of that? No. Absolutely not. Can I be involved with any of it? No, I can't. So I ended up making the decision to place time for free in a very amazing pet home with a long time person on my wait list up in Washington State. And she is doing amazing. She loves her more than anything. They cuddle every day on the bed. It is the best home for time. But given everything going on, given the way my life is going, just didn't seem fit to keep time in my program or keep time in my home. And she was placed a little bit of go to a really, really amazing person. So and that was pretty hard. But I knew that was what was best for time and my program moving forward. And not to mention to like, people always want to talk about what was me, I bought a dog and blah, blah, blah. I paid $3,000 for time. Like I wasn't given time, I bought time. And I made the decision to place her for free to a really, really great home. So like people always want to talk about I paid XYZ and the dog didn't turn out how I wanted. Well, join the club. We all get dogs like that. Like we have all gotten a dog that didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. And you just have to make best of the situation. Do you think the German Shepherd community, specifically breeders, will ever recover from the toxic mess that it is right now? Uh, short answer, no. But long answer, I think if more people in the community start speaking up for people getting bullied, start speaking up for people getting harassed, start speaking up and saying, no, you cannot do this to people people out here trying like I know her I know her dogs like absolutely not leave her alone like I think if people start understanding that breeders are people too and not every dog you get will be perfect every puppy you get will be perfect I think the community would be much better off 
However, there's this new age of generation of people going, well, if I buy a, if I buy a puppy, it better be perfect or I want my money back. But I signed a contract that says I don't get that, but that's what I want. And I think people need to understand that dogs are living creatures. And I think the community would be a little less toxic if people started understanding that dog breeders are people too. And if you treat them with hate, they're going to reciprocate you with sticking to their ground. But if you treat them like a human, come to them on a human level, don't demand, don't harass, don't slander, be a decent human being and say, oh, this is a situation like, what can we do? Be normal and you'll get treated with typically respect. But the dog sport world is full of ego. That's literally all it is. So I just don't see it ending up not being toxic. I mean, I see this ending up being a dumpster fire, but whatever. I'll roast marshmallows. Like that, all those marshmallows. I mean, honestly, like, it's just gotten out of control. I mean, there's so many breeders that are not breeding anymore, like, you know, looking yep. to, to take a step away, which, again, me included. I mean, I want to stop before I've even started at this point. And it's not because it's not because I can't handle the hate or, you know, people talking shit. It's just like, I don't want to deal with it, you know? Yeah. And I don't think anyone should have to. If you guys all want to no. talk shit about shepherd breeders and hate on them 24-7, well, guess what? Then they're going to stop breeding because they don't want to deal with it. That's right. Eventually, you know, they could, people could say they don't care. They could say that, you know, whatever, and try to brush it off. But it's exhausting. No one wants yeah. to deal with it. And you know no. better than anyone how exhausting it is. Like, nobody no. wants to deal with this shit. It's ridiculous. Especially, like, we were just talking about this. Like, having a baby, yeah. like, there are so many more important things. Like, taking care Absolutely. of your son and your child. To even want to give an ounce of attention to these kinds of things, you know? Any advice for a novice working puppy buyer, someone that wants to apply for a future litter? Be open-minded. Don't expect your puppy to be like everybody else's don't expect your puppy to be perfect expect to put a lot of fucking work into that dog to get it to how you want it to be um and then always treat your breeder with respect no matter where it's from no matter where it's from like i have dealt with some really shitty ass breeders myself and even got sued by one of them because he was so bad shit crazy you're still bad shit crazy i hope you hear this i've dealt with bad breeders you know i've dealt with a breeder that bred a dysplastic dog to a one-year-old dog and then gave me a puppy i didn't even pick out and it was awful like the dog was awful um i literally was spraying poopery on a pile of shit at the end of the day <laughs> and i still you've never seen me post shitty things about that breeder even though he was absolutely god awful god awful so it's one of those like treat your breeder with respect expect your puppy not to be perfect and work the dog in front of you yeah i didn't have the best relationship with one of my breeders and i actually hated my experience with them but i was never sitting online talking shit yeah. pups. right um, me neither me what do you think about naturally occurring recessive colors like liver and blue in the working line shepherd such a loaded question y'all are really here for the tea aren't you i see you um so technically they're against standard i breed for standard technically they're against standard have these dogs popped up overseas out of health tested entitled parents with great pedigree yes they have naturally occurring is the blue linked to a genetic disorder potentially yes it is is the liver not to my knowledge do Am I going to come after somebody that gets a randomly occurred puppy from a titled and health tested litter out of standard dogs that ends up liver or blue? Am I going to go after them? No, I'm not. I have better things to do with my time. Buy what you want. But there is something wrong with breeding for color and disregarding health and temperament. Okay, there's always something wrong with that. There's something wrong with breeding for anything with disregarding health and temperament, regardless of the color of the fucking dog. I don't care if you disregard the health and temperament of a dog. I have nothing for you. I have nothing for you. So I do not produce off color German Shepherds. And that's about it. German Shepherd anytime soon. Fuck no. Mutated dog. So what breeders would you and would you not recommend? So it doesn't, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. It doesn't go into who and who not. It goes into what and how. So if you have a breeder that is health testing, right? Hips, elbows, DM. 
right? And you have a breeder that you can talk to. You have a breeder that knows their dog's temperament, that is pairing for temperament, pairing for a vision, pairing for a purpose, has some type of knowledge in picking puppies, you know, has some type of knowledge in, in the things that they're talking about. And whether that be they're a dog trainer, they title dogs, like whatever their avenue is, that they have some background to say, hey, yeah, I do know what I'm doing. I've had 20 litters and I've only gotten three dogs returned for a temperament flaw in the ones I've placed, right? Like that would be something I would look at and be like, oh shit, she knows what she's talking about, right? Like she has a really good eye for pairing puppies. And also picking a breeder that suits what your vision is. If you want a oh, national- Oh, you're fine. Oh, sweet baby. Oh, this is a good time to show my crew neck so my hair's been covered. Go. Are you wearing it. it or no? Yeah, right here. Can you see it? It's just blurry. Oh yeah, I see it. Okay, so it's very important to pick a breeder that breeds for what you want, right? So like if you want an active companion, well, is this litter going to be suited for an active companion, right? Like if you want a high level national world level dog, go to a person that's on a podium. Like go to somebody that's producing these dogs. Go to somebody that's trialing at that level and then make sure you have a trainer and you're a skilled enough handler to be able to train that dog to that level because just because you get a puppy out of a world level dog doesn't mean that puppy is going to be a world level dog it means you need to do a lot of hard work to get it there if it even has yep. the potential so yep. i think finding a breeder that fits your goals and lifestyle and i also like breeders that let me meet the parents i really like that shit like i know some people are like eh, i don't care but like i want to be able to see the dogs i want to be able to see the dogs i want to be able to be around them without them trying to fucking kill me you know like i don't i don't want to walk out and you know get eaten by somebody's dog but that's one thing i tell everybody that has been to my house i'm like there's not one dog at my house i could let out without like there's not one dog I have that I could not let out without any collar or without a leash and they would not hurt anybody. All of my dogs at my home are social with people or neutral. All of my dogs. None of them need any collar to be outside. None of them need any collar to have people in the house. They don't get aggressive. They don't get territorial like that. Like when everything is normal, my dogs, I can have a billion people over at my house and my dogs act like they're there to see them. And that's one thing I always get when people come over and visit. And some of the encouragement ones, there was somebody that said like, I'm really thankful that I got to come to your house last summer and meet your dogs and I was thinking back about that experience I'm like yeah she met a bunch of my dogs and they were like cuddling on the couch together and hanging out and being off leash outside I don't have a front fence and my dogs just stay like they know like what is theirs and what isn't and their recall is all good so and I don't live in a neighborhood I live in like the middle of nowhere and so it's just really nice to have that comfort of anybody can come over at any time and let out any dog off leash with no e-collar and the dog is going to be like oh my god you're here to see me or they're going to be like I don't know you I don't care Carolyn saying that all of her dogs are social. I mean, Every that's huge. One. If, for a social German Shepherd, you know, for a family dog, for a house dog, for, you know, you have a, a house party or you have guests over and they're not getting eaten alive by your German Shepherd. Like, that's why I always recommend Carolyn and, and her program because I think that the temperament of dogs that she's producing oh, yeah. is just amazing. I think it does really good by the breed. There are a lot of German Shepherds that aren't social. And I do still think that there's a place for dogs, for Shepherds who aren't, maybe oh, not, not not unsocial to the point where like, you know, they're just this uncontrolled, mm -hmm. you know, liability, like super bad dog. But, you know, like I said, they weren't bred to be golden retrievers, but yep. there are plenty of dogs, plenty of Shepherds out there being bred that aren't social. And I think it's really important that more that our social are bred. So yeah. um, I've, I've always loved that about your, what do you think is a worst trait in breeding a DM carrier or crypt? If you had to breed with crypt slash DM carrier, which one would you rather? That is such a weird question. I'm not sure so, who asked that, but like you don't breed crypts, like. For yeah, starters, you do not breed a crypt testicle dog. Like if they're not dropped by 12 to 16 weeks, they are crypt and you do not breed them um for starters secondly you can breed a dm carrier as long as they're bred to a clear and you can even breed a dm affected dog as long as it's 
bred to a clear because all the puppies would just be carriers. What you can't breed is a carrier to a carrier or an affected to a carrier because you will get affected puppies. And that goes with any asomic, asosomatic, or I don't know the word. There's a term for it. I'm just not educated enough to say it. But it basically means it's a double recessive. So it needs two copies to be an active gene. So I would much rather breed a DM carrier because I would never breed a crypt. I guess that's the answer to that question. Yeah. Um, so when will you breed talks and to who will they make good working dogs? So I get this question all the time, actually. Um, and don't get me wrong. Tox has like a billion and 10 great qualities, but Tox also has a billion and 10 fucking annoying ass qualities. So I don't know when I'll breed him personally in my program because he doesn't really feel fit the breeder side of me he fits the dog trainer and sports side of me like he makes me like come alive and like he's an amazing animal but like the breeder side of me is kind of scared um because he is a lot of dog and if somebody gets a puppy out of him and they're not prepared to deal with a dog so possessive they swallow toys as a young dog because they don't want you to take them from them like if they're not prepared for a dog that comes out of a crate and latches onto you and punches you and digs in deeper at 12 weeks old and doesn't get off of you and when you try to choke them off growls and bites you harder like if they're not prepared for like like a real frustrated driven dog i mean they'll get returned so it's one of those if and when he's bred it has to be to the right female now i have a few breeder friends that are planning to breed to tox because they have females that i do wish i had because i'm like man i could breed her to him and they would actually maybe turn out decent but i just don't have any in my program at this time that i would feel comfortable breeding him to because i know my dogs i know my dogs and just because you have a nice dog doesn't mean you breed it to all of your dogs if it doesn't pair up naturally and or correctly and that's why i kind of bought soggy because he can be bred to so many different kinds of dogs because he is just such a good slate with not a he's the easiest dog i think i've ever imported i mean he's clean he's quiet he's sweet he's social he's neutral like he's just you could take him anywhere and do anything with him he bites hard full like he's even sherrod worked him and he was like damn this is a nice fucking dog and i'm like yeah and i had another decoy and savannah work him and he was like i hope you're breeding this dog and i was like i am don't worry because he's just an easy dog where tox is a very dominant possessive frustrated monster and i'm like tox just simmer it's fine like we're fine i love you we're fine so i don't know when i will breed tox personally do i think i will breed him in my program one day yeah i do maybe once or twice i mean with some you know disclaimers but he'll really (laughs) yeah he'll really be a warning yeah like a big old toxic warning sign because he's just a lot of dog and i'm a dog trainer i have a malinois like i know what a lot of dog is okay people like i'm not just some rookie person that gets this no he is a lot and if you see him right now he's so great and sweet and loving and good because i trained the motherfucker for two and a half years of course he would be this way i would be appalled if he was not this way because that would mean I didn't train him. He wasn't a dog that you just sit back and do leftover training with. He's a dog you gotta train every fucking day or he's crazy. So I definitely think he will be open for stud once I get a BH on him and to select females, like very, very select females that I have intense and depth conversations with you about. I tell you all the ins and out about talks and his obsession with the fucking broom and you know, everything about the dog so that you can make the best educated decision for your program if you want to breed to talks he is grip department everything honestly i'm actually looking at pursuing psa with him because he's not a puller he is not a puller that boy gets a grip punches and holds punches and holds i mean naturally like he just isn't a big puller like we've been trying to teach him to pull and he just possesses and looks and holds and gets all like intense and i'm like dude really like just pull you're an IGP dog. Just pull, please. Yes. Yeah, and so yeah. his yeah, his out is also a silent guard. I also did that too. So I'm like, maybe I'll just do PSA with you. I think you'd much enjoy it. Yeah. So I've actually thought about going that route. So if people are looking for more of a puncher and possession, he's the kind of dog. 
he's not a polar. So I think that's much different than like aggro or nitro or any of my other dogs. Most of them are polars. So it was really weird to see Tox punch and possess and hold and like Mika. He does the same shit Mika does. And I'm like, what? <laughs> doing so anyway long story short that's my answer yeah that's funny out of my dogs jersey and rue are like that yeah. um it's it's not as surprising i mean obviously they're they're bred for years for you know igp but rue obviously came from a psa dog colt who has really the same nice pushing full hard yeah. deep grips really possessive rue is extremely possessive mm -hmm. to the point where if she was in a home that didn't know what to do with her yeah. they'd have some issues she i have no yeah. issues with her obviously because i'm experienced and i know how to you know avoid conflict or you know, just handle a dog like that. But she's extremely possessive. She will literally like the other day I was working my dogs on the back tie at Shiraz while we were visiting. I had Rev out. I had Rev, Rue and Savvy. I had all them out, but I was switching dogs. So I just put Jersey up. So I was working Revel on the tugger sleeve and I had just worked Rue. And for most of my dogs, if I'm like running around with like another tug while I'm working a different dog, they're all going to drop with what they have and they're gonna start barking again on the back tie and Rue is just sitting there like still countering and pushing and like I hear her choking I'm like down there with Revel trying to focus on how many barks I'm getting from her and like I literally hear Rue like choking because she's still countering on like the sleeve that I have you know down there so I thought that was funny and then Jersey's the same way I mean Jersey's biting is just insane he was never a puller yep. out of them Abby was definitely more she yep. definitely wants to or naturally, right. which again, I mean, that's what yeah, German Shepherd. Do. Finally, we get some lighthearted ones. What are you most proud of with your program? Honestly, I think it goes back to, you know, the original vision of providing great dogs for great homes. And I got into breeding because I wanted to change and save lives that they went into. I wanted dogs to be that reason that people got up in the morning when their day was shit. You know, I did struggle with suicide at one point when I was in college. And the only reason I didn't was because Conan walked in the bathroom. Like, it means something to me. When I started out this, I wanted people to have Conan. I wanted them to have the reason that your life is shit, but it's fine. Because you have a dog that loves you more than anything. And you have a dog that thinks you're its whole world. You're, you're all of it to this dog. And my proudest homes are the homes that view their dogs like that. And they message me and they go, you know, Carolyn, this dog changed my life. This dog saved me when I was going through a divorce. This dog saved me when my mother died. You know, this dog saved me from deep depression. This dog got me out of this. This dog alerted to my heart rate. You know, like it's story after story after story of these people that message me and they're like, thank you. Thank you for this. And people always ask me, why do you keep going? You have so much shit that people say and they come after you. How do you do these people that message me at least a couple times a week? Thank you for my dog. This is my dog. This is what she did. This is what he did. I love him more than anything. He's the best dog I've ever had in my whole entire life. Time and time and time and time again. And what really hit it home was Kaza and Samantha. I'm sure you've seen Kaza the SD. Kaza the yeah. SD. Yeah. So yep. Samantha is a living testament of a wood wolf dog. She contacted me a couple years ago about a puppy and then messaged me that she couldn't get a puppy because of her living situation and she was in school. And I had Kaza and she was like six, seven months old. And I was like, the day before I had told Juliana, I think this dog needs to be a service dog. And then Samantha messaged me and I was like, oh my God she needs this dog. And so her brother drove her to the border and I picked her up. I'm a complete stranger and I pick up this kid, you know? And I mean, she was like 18, 19, you know? And uh, take her to my house and she meets Kesa and it was just instant. I knew, I knew. I was like, I'm gonna take her this dog. So she ended I remember up getting, when... yes. And it ended up, she got Kesa and Kesa has saved this girl's life numerous times, numerous times and changed her life completely radically changed this woman's life saved her life and has she has now had so many doors open so so many people she's now reached and she's now affected and she's now helped and she's now you know turned into this beautiful person that i got to watch this shell 
depressed, sad, lonely girl turn into this beautiful, confident, strong woman. And that has been one of the most beautiful things over the last three years is watching Samantha mature into the person she is today. And not many people know, I guess everybody knows, I mean, that that closely follows me. Samantha lived right next door to me for a year on my parents' property. And she helped me with dogs and she saw, girl, she saw the heart. She saw the stillborn puppies. She saw the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in vet care. She saw everything behind Woodwolf. And I'm telling you, anybody who sees you at your rawest moments, at your worst moments, and still stays with you and still goes, you have a good heart. You have a good, you're here for a good reason. And anybody that does that and is still in your corner at the end of the day, that tells you something about them and the person that they're with. I didn't manipulate Samantha. I didn't convince her, don't say anything bad. Don't, you know, like I've never said that to her. I'm like, you can talk about anything you want. And you know what she says? I miss the fuck out of you, Carolyn. I miss you and I love you. And I wish I didn't have the medical issues I had and had to go back home. That is the only reason she left or else I would have kidnapped her for like 18 more years. (laughs) She was was there when I extremely needed her. And I think I was there when she needed me. So Samantha knows everything behind Wonder Wolf. And I mean, I do definitely view her as a little sister. And I'm thankful for, you know, being able to step into her life when I did. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think for, you know, the few homes that have not had good experiences or turned something that you can help into a negative thing and blamed it on you, you have you know, quadruple the amount of homes right. that are super grateful for their dogs that absolutely love their dogs that are super happy with not only their dogs, because obviously everyone loves their dogs from you, even the ones that complain, <laughs> but not only love the dogs, but love you. Um, yeah. So, you know, when you are having so many litters, there's always going to be, you know, the few bad people. Absolutely. Um, but I think overall, like you just have great puppy buyers. You have a great community that you've built around your dogs with your puppies. You're always up to date. I mean, I don't know any other breeder that has so many puppies puppies on the ground that is so invested into each one yeah Um, you know you have like spreadsheets on everything like you know every (laughs) single thing that's fun obviously I feel like there'll be a part two at some point because people are not gonna like what I said in here (laughs) um because people don't like the truth people don't want to hear the truth People are going to say, oh, no, that's not how it happened. And I'm over here like, dude, I have every screenshot, every email, everything. You can't deny the truth. Now, of course, you can have your own feelings and emotions about how a situation happened, but you can't deny facts. And yeah, feelings and emotions are not the same thing as facts. Right. So let's definitely take that into account when people come out and they're like, oh, this or this. And it's like, um, but the facts don't lie. And that's at the end of the day, what I'm going to stick to. Where's my girl? Well, is the web. <gasps> Hi, no, beautiful. Oh my God. She's so pretty. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Why oh, I feel a nipple. I look retarded. She looks great. So closing remarks. Thank you everyone for watching. So I'm just, I'm really not here for all the drama, for all of the hatred towards Carolyn or towards other breeders that have done nothing wrong right. to absolutely. All the hate that everyone's getting, we're we're just not here for it. So with that being said, thank you everyone for joining my podcast and we hope you have a great night. Bye.